Hello and welcome to the studio for another interview. I have next to me Howard Yu. Howard is Lego Professor of Management and Innovation at IMD. He leads the Center for Future Readiness, which was founded a couple of years ago to help companies through strategic transformation. And my first question is, Howard, it must feel so cool to be called Lego <laughs> Professor of Management. Actually, I have a small surprise. Oh my god, <laughs> look at that. I used to uh, work at Lego for some time. It was ah. my first internship ever at Lego. Oh my gosh, so, I cannot imagine. It yeah, must be so fun. It was very interesting. So what is it like to be a Lego Professor of Management? Well, it's still a real human, not a minifig. But um, the Lego group obviously is so generous in their funding on our research. And this is in large part how we open up the Center for Future Readiness and allowed us to really study company across six different industry, uh, 20 of them, just to understand what makes an organization or team future ready. Mm. You also bring out the Future Readiness Indicator every year, which yes. is available on the website of the Center, I believe. Yeah. You just brought it out. Future Readiness is a very cool name. What does it mean and how do you even assess future readiness. Yeah, that's company. a great question, Fran, because when we're thinking about what makes a company future ready, if you dig deep, right, because you could think about finance, you could think about consumer packaged goods, you could think about pharmaceutical technology, automakers. Of course, each different industry have their unique playbook. But if you drill really deep through research to unpack why do these little group, tiny group of company, they stay future ready over the long run? Gosh, there are universal behavior. Meaning, whether you are financial, a big bank, all the way to a technology company or car maker, if you're future ready, there are certain universal behaviors that the company embrace. And I thought that is such a good way to spread the good news to executives so that we could all learn from one another. How would you boil down future readiness <laughs> in a grain? Yeah, so if you force me just to <laughs> say, what is that one corporate behavior, right, that they are able to do well, it comes down to perform and transform, meaning they don't choose. It wasn't like, oh, when time is great, we're going to transform, we're going to invest in new venture, new startup, and you know, a bunch of innovation. And when time is bad, I'm going to cut all that and bring money back to the bottom line. What we see is future-ready company, they persist. They don't allow either or. Mm. They sit on both. Mm. So I'm hearing a continuous commitment to innovation. Yes, and clear and strong priority. Mm -hmm. Because if at the corporate level, if the priority is not clear, what kind of new capability we must scale, that is almost impossible for the next level to translate. What you want is a company can add things mm. up. Because without these priorities, it won't trickle down to all the levels and layers. People just getting lost. My initiative is not consistent with yours. Mm. We are getting into the fight with silos. We couldn't really talk with one another. We talk past one another. So it's all these very human conflicts start to bubbling up. But it do require every level, every leaders across levels and functions to have a constant conversation, to clarify it. So if we have this vision, what does it mean in my area? What does it mean in your area? And we need to be brave to have those dialogue. Mm. Future readiness sounds tricky, and it sounds great at the same time. Yes. When reading this <laughs> like word future readiness, I was thinking, I want to be future ready too. Ah. Because uh, future readiness in times yes. of uncertainty is for companies a challenge, but I guess also for every one of us. Yes, yes. Or even for entrepreneurs, for people who are in charge of their careers. How can we yeah. stay future ready? Yeah. I, I think you just touch us on something really important, right? Because let's get, you know, let's be frank about it. We know lifetime employment is impossible these days. And the Gen Z, and the next generation, Gen Alva, they know mm. it's gonna be a portfolio work. So my work is not just about a future-ready organization, of course, this is how you think about strategy, but for individual contributor, professional manager, we've got to figure out how can I, as an employee, have my own influence around my immediate surrounding 
so that my contribution is valuable, unique, and fresh, but within the organization as well as across the whole industry. Mm. This is what I see, whether it's a, seriously, a factory summer intern all the way to the chief scientist, they also exhibit a few personal behavior so that they stay future ready, regardless of what happened outside at the organization at large. And that, to me, is the most important message. What are the two, three key attributes that you and I can practice every single day? What are these two, three attributes? Now I get you a cliffhanger, right? <laughs> um, I mean, we all got to lean in to develop the next skill. What do I mean by that? Um, you know, whether you're a professional contributor, right, individual contributor, you must be a master in certain domain. Mm. You know, finance, I could think about finance, marketing, public relations, legal work, right? But what is required, of course, in the age of AI is that you develop a second expertise. In the past, remember, we talked about T-shape? Yes. Right? You know one thing and then you are broadly interested. What today is needed is a combination of two, at least, deep skills. So it's an N-shape, mm. right? So not that we all need to become an AI expert, that would be beside the point. But there we have it. You have one single expertise coming here. I'm an expert in marketing, right? But I am so curious about manufacturing. So you develop cross silo project a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Then with Gen AI, we could actually accelerate that learning cycle. The combination of expertise then would allow us to become much more differentiable mm. in the labor market, and also to bring outsized contribution to your organization. And literally in our research, if you keep track of career advancement among manager or top executive, that is the number one. That's the, it's the number one behavior. You've got to build up that life work yeah. to develop a meaningful second leg of expertise that bring you joy. So the new T-shaped people are the N-shaped people, according to you. Yeah, yeah. The new T is the N. The new T is the N. Maybe we need to make an, an H as the next progression <laughs> then. <laughs> you wrote a book a couple of years ago, mm. Leap, How to Thrive in a, com in a World Where Everything Can Be Copied. You talked about this concept of leaping. Yeah. I'm interested. Can you explain it to us mm. once again? Yeah. Can you also explain to us, because you just mentioned AI, how this concept of leaping has changed over the years, right. what it means now. Right. So obviously when I wrote the book Leap, Gen AI wasn't that hot yet. People talk about machine learning, hmm. big data analytics, remember these names. Um, and, and I think back then what I describe is organizations that have staying power to fan off copycat competition are the ones who are able to integrate and leap to the next knowledge discipline. I'll give you a very concrete example, right? If you're thinking about the world of Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Coke, Nike of the world, in the past, you make standard product, standard offering, standard channel, go global, you win. What we see is today, of course, it's omni-channel, personalized offering. All of these require new knowledge. So if I trace back even 200 years ago of long business history, organization have staying power, they leap and integrate mm -hmm. next knowledge discipline. So that was my thought at the time. But then I think what happened with Gen AI these days, it just pushed a turbo charge for organization to leap even quicker. Doesn't mean that we just blindly adopt AI technology. And I, I'm really skeptical for companies just keep on talking AI and just copy paste because if you're a car maker, your domain knowledge matters. You know car safety, you know how to build a car. It's just that you need to integrate a new capability. For instance, software on top, chipset design on top. And the superpower come into this tight integration mm. between the past and the future. And that's your differentiation. It's almost like at the personal level, right? So company needs to also become N shape. A bridge. There you go. <laughs> yeah, especially um, since you talked about the past and integrating the future. Yeah. You also recently published a blog article mm. where you shared that Jeff Bezos raised <laughs> an important question is not mm. just to ask what's going to change in the next 10 years, but what's going to stay the same. Yeah. What's going to stay the same. What's going to stay the same. I think this also tied to 
I think the core mission of leaders. Um, I often feels like the most effective executive are the one today can slow things down, meaning slow down the frenzy mm. of an organization because employees are scared. People are scared at companies from geopolitics to technology disruption to shift on market positioning. And what leader needs to focus on is, okay, a number of things is gonna change, but what is not changing? Mm -hmm. So what is not changing, obviously, we still have human need. If collaboration become more and more important, Gen AI is gonna get email, everything so standardized to make it feels good, looks good, then boy, what is not changing? To build trust, I need to see the other person unplug. From there, if I'm focusing on building the world-class employee experience, then it's very quickly. I've got to make every single face-to-face -face meeting to be meaningful and purposeful. No boring meetings should exist these days with Gen AI. So, so focusing on the non-changing, mm -hmm. I really believe could bring sustainable differentiation. Which again ties into what you said before, you know, to know your priorities and yeah. to have the priorities straight, which is, I think, what you just said, even more important in this age of AI where everything is just Right, and we in. really cannot outsource that thinking to your supervisor or the corporation. I really believe, sus you know, successful organization, everyone is an innovator, and it's not just the know-how these days. Know-how can be easily automated. It's to know why. So that we leverage the best tool out there and to think creatively, put your own cherry on the top. Mm, that's wonderful. When we talked a little bit ahead of the interview, you also gave me a small tease, a oh. secret maybe, yes. which is that you're writing a new book. I know. Can you tell us more about your new book? When will it be out, what it's about? Are N-shaped people and companies <laughs> gonna feature in it? Well, so because over the last few years, we've been collecting case studies, we've been doing empirical research and looking at what makes future company future ready, it reaches the point that I felt like, you know, we could share some messages. Messages that no matter where you are, where you lead, here is one or two area that are almost like lever. You could mm. pull so that you could stay one inch ahead. The reality is the following. If you are a consumer packaged goods company or fashion company or a bank, for instance, you do not need to be as AI driven as NVIDIA or Microsoft. But you need to stay one inch ahead mm. of your competition. And so it's this idea that sometimes in order to move fast, you need to do the slow work. Why is it slow? Because if we unpack the team dynamic, individual behavior, those are hard. Those require enduring emotional challenges. And we want to unpack and give readers a sort of a guide tool to become future ready individually. That sounds really, really fascinating. And again, I'm hearing this being bridged, having two feet in two different spheres. That's right. To predict and manage the future, we need to understand the past. Mm. Don't forget the domain knowledge we all got from day one. Yeah, it's so easy to get sucked into this craziness and it's so important to also slow down, be in the present. Slow and down to become fast. Yes, <laughs> that's a wonderful end to our interview. Howard, it's been so fascinating to talk to you. I took so many interesting thoughts. I took the end shape. Thank I love it. Thank yes. you for bringing this. What a great surprise. Thank you so much for joining Thank me. You, Thank you for listening. Have a lovely day at the forum. Oh, absolutely. Thank and to you. the rest of the audience, please stay tuned because now we're going to show a really nice video about the Global Peter Drucker Challenge.